Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Ivan Blasquez here. So we're going to discuss um, the exercise component to um, addressing and um, preventing and potentially reversing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So really the combination of cardio and weight training is going to give the best results because you have different adaptations uh, for each mode. And I've talked about tri bodybuilding concurrent training. I've done videos on this in the past. And here we are uh, coming full circle with this applying to uh, you know another condition, in this case, a fatty liver. Cardio increases lipolysis. It all, also upregulates the uncoupling protein as well as PPAR, which are important in fat metabolism. You also have an alteration in adipocytokine, in particular adiponectin. Resistance training helps to obviously hypertrophy the muscles which increases insulin sensitivity. Uh, this is a result of the activation of GLUT4. The caveolins, which is uh, a protein that is uh, involved in uh, insulin sensitivity. And then you have AMPK, which I've talked about in previous videos. This is, the, um, this is like the gateway to uh, catabolism or via fat loss. So doing both is really key here, guys. I will be just discussing diet in a future video, but for this video, we're focusing on exercise. As you can see here, once again, the combination of strength training and cardio, you're gonna Im improve your, uh, the, the liver enzymes will be improved and insulin resistance will be improved. VO2 peak or VO2 max, this is the gold standard. This is the, the key to fatty liver is our fitness level. Now, as you see here, Fitness level, as the higher the fitness level, we have a, there's going to be a correlation with a lower waist circumference, a lower body mass index, a lower visceral fat, uh, visceral adipose tissue, which is belly fat, and also lower body fat. We also have here uh, fitness level. Once again, the higher the fitness level, you're going to have a lower incidence or prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And that that's also goes with um, lower body mass index and lower waist circumference also. Now here, guys, this is a cool schematic from, um, that I just got from a study here. Uh, High-intensity interval training is a potent uh, inducer of AMPK, which we'll, we'll be discussing later how this uh, impacts fatty liver. Here is an elegant paper on AMPK and how it's involved in reducing liver lipids and reducing the risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You have autophagy is connected to that, exercise, and then we have, uh, from my Tamarin video, we talked about how when the um, acetylcoenzyme A, when we inhibit the uh, acetylcoenzyme A carboxylase, we also inhibit fat storage or de novo lipogenesis, which is really when you have the, the it's the malonocoenzyme A. So when you inhibit that entire sequence, you, you decrease the, the fat storage. And we also, you're going to see an increase in fat burning. So Here's a cool bar graph showing that you, we compared high, there was a study that compared high intensity interval exercise with steady state and yet a control group, and only the high intensity interval exercise led to a significant reduction in central um, adiposity. Here you have, again, a uh, high intensity interval training group led to a significant reduction in intrahepatic lipids. And then here, this is going to be coming out of my Denver 5 video, where I talk about it's better to be fit regardless of what a person's body fat is. So if a person's overweight or at an optimal weight, we want to be fit regardless. So as you see, being fit is going to lower the risk of, this is metabolic syndrome, the, the cluster of metabolic syndrome, which is a common uh, you know, association with uh, fatty liver. The, the fitter we are, the better, the better off we're going to be. All right, guys, so this landmark study shows that we don't always have to do HIT in the way people uh, perceive it. Here we have a study where you have two groups that are walking, two walking groups, okay? So the continuous walking group, their average intensity was 72%, uh, percent, and then the average intensity for the interval group was 70%, uh, and this is based on energy expenditure. So what's interesting is the interval group, so the continuous group was 72% the whole time. The, con the interval group walk for three minutes at 53.9, which is their slow walking interval, and for their fast walking, 89.4. So they alternated back and forth for three minutes. Now, both of these groups exercise 60 minutes, okay? Uh, but the average intensity for the interval group was 70.5, which is ins insignificant for the continuous group, okay? So essentially, this goes to show that the average intensity may actually be the same at the end of the exercise bout, but if we throw in those intervals within the exercise bout, that intensity stimulus, the threshold, we see significant uh, difference in results as can be seen here. Uh, 
with those groups. The interval walking group had a significantly greater increase in their VO2 max, a significant reduction in their, in their, in their body weight, as well as the fat mass and visceral fat, which is the, the, the deep belly fat that's really important in regards to fatty liver. So this study here shows that the results can be attained by walking and throwing some intervals. So going, so walk, going for a nice, easy, leisurely walk and then throwing in a couple brisk walk intervals within that. So this really is applicable to any population. Okay, so these last couple slides just illustrate the, the relationship between being inactive, sedentary, and uh, being at greater risk of non alcoholic or really just kind of this is connected with the condition. Uh, those who have the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease tend to be more sedentary, uh, they take less steps and, and so forth and expend less energy. Here's a beautiful study that was done uh, that showed that regardless of volume and intensity, that the group that exercised, simply exercised compared to the group that did not exercise, they had a significant reduction in uh, intrahepatic lipids and visceral adipose tissue compared to the placebo group, which actually had increases. So bringing this all together, guys, concurrent training is going to be key. We want to uh, do both resistance training and, and, and cardiovascular exercise. We want to do high-intensity interval training if, if, it's, if, if, if we're able and capable, but if we're not, we could certainly do LIT and MIT, which is moderate and low-intensity interval training uh, in a form of walking. Uh, for special populations. We want to sit less and move more. So for every one or two hours of sitting, we want to try and get up and stand and walk for 20 to 60 seconds or even as much as two to three minutes. The AMPK angle, again, I talk about the systemic, the systemic signaling science and how I've cracked the obesity code. We're going to keep coming back to this because I'm speaking the truth and I'm living proof of the truth, the catabolic anabolic signaling science, the pathways. So without it, without, with that, guys, I'd like to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my nutrition segment on this series. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Tune in next time.